Hello, my name is Vitotas Botrimas. I'm going to talk about the industrial cybersecurity for the Chief Information System or Security Officer. It's the second part of a three-part series. It will shed some light on the importance of defining what it is that needs to be protected in an industrial or manufacturing environment, where the focus is more on protecting the physical process rather than the data or information used in the office or business part of the enterprise. Some important definitions. As CISOs, we need to understand what we are talking about if we are to communicate with our plant engineers and control room operators who may not have that much time to stop and explain things. On the other hand, there are differing interpretations of what terms like information technology, IT, operational technology, OT, industrial control systems, ICS, and industrial automation and control systems, IACS, what they mean. Of all the terms you may find, your engineers will understand you if you use the latter two terms, ICS and IACS. I will focus on trying to explain IT, OT, and ICS. While IACS is similar to ICS, it is a term used in the ISA 62443 standard, which some may not be familiar with. To get a further explanation of IACS, I recommend looking at an MLM that is specifically devoted to definitions. Look out for MLM 014A on IT, OT, and IACS definitions. IT, uh, for me, is what happens in your office, accounting, the billing, or the, the uh, administration part of your enterprise. The focus there is on the processing of information and trying to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information that are vitally needed to administer the enterprise. Operational technology is the hardware and software used to monitor and control the physical process. The physical process is not found in your office, near the meeting or server room, but is at some separate location, perhaps in a control room, where an operator is looking up at a big screen showing a lighted map or a pipeline on a similar screen. These, the state of these physical processes are visualized with the help of a human-machine interface, or HMI. It is usually a Windows uh, computer with a screen similar to what you are looking at right now, or use some other operating system, but essentially it is, a, it is showing what the intelligent electronic devices closely monitoring and controlling some e equipment near the physical process is what's, what is its state. For example, what is the fuel going down the pipeline? What is the turbine doing that's generating the electricity? Is it in a safe state or not? These intelligent devices that closely monitor and control the physical process are industrial control systems. Industrial control systems. It's where the process is, where the action is. They are mostly computer-based, used by infrastructures and industries to monitor and control sensitive processes and physical functions. They collect sensor measurements and operational data from the field, process and display this information, and relay control commands to local or remote equipment. There in the lower right hand, you see an actuator connected to a boiler. It, you know, it turns on the heat uh, to uh, heat up the boiler. Uh, to the left of that is a pipeline. There's a, a sensor attached to it. It's a Doppler sensor using sound waves uh, to determine the, the rate of flow of, of fuel. And, then, and to the far left, you have program logic controllers, which are programmed in advance to perform certain actions uh, according to the set points of the process. The key thing to remember about industrial control system space as opposed to office IT space is that the laws of physics and chemistry operate here and can be used for wonderful benefits, but unfortunately can accidentally or through malicious intent cause great harm. The Chernobyl nuclear accident disaster of 1986 is a good example of what can go wrong in the monitoring and control of a physical process. Operators did not realize the potential dangers of their actions, which were not malicious. For example, in disabling some safety systems in order to allow a special test of the reactor control systems, which ended in, in tragedy. Industrial control systems depend on people, automation, and intelligent devices to keep operations safe and reliable. 
The basic process control system, BPCS, is the main computer system of the operating process that receives information about the process, including pressure, temperature, flow, and level of transmitters on the system equipment, and transmits signals to manipulate the position of the control valves in the process to ensure the system continues to operate under the desired operating conditions. It is a central processing unit and computer that controls everything in the installation. You'll kind of think of it uh, uh, as the human body. When you eat something, you don't think about how to digest it. It's your body's uh, basic process control system. It knows where to send the food, what chemicals to add, and it's all you know, within operational uh, limits if you don't get indigestion. Safety instrumented systems, SIS, are independent safety systems that are pre-programmed to immediately react to a monitored physical process that strays beyond preset bounds. They are programmed to bring the physical process back to a safe state that avoids a catastrophic event and allows for the operator to attend to the problem and make the repair. When an SIS fails to do their job, we have unpleasant events like the Deepwater Horizon disaster where the SIS failed to perform their primary function of bringing the drilling operation back to a safe state. And this caused uh, months of ecological damage in the Gulf of Mexico. How does IT differ from the ICS found in industrial environments? Well, for one, in IT cybersecurity, the operation is, is to protect the data and the information there. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability is very important. In uh, terms of confidentiality, you know, the password uh, is a very long one that the IT guy gives you uh, to make sure that only you can access that information. Then they're also concerned that that information is accurate, that it hasn't been uh, corrupted. The integrity of that is available and uh, availability that you can get to it when you need it. In ICS, the operation is to keep a physical process within preset bounds. All right, safety is the main driver for operations in an industrial environment. It's not so much the information and the data, but is, you know, how is the process going? How is it doing? Are the safety systems in place? Is the basic process control system working? Uh, they're keeping the flow of fuel, the, the, the generation and the distribution of electricity according to what is uh, planned in the process. What are the consequences of failure in ITOT and ICS? Very different. They're serious, but they're different. If the IT stops in the office, you, you, know, you reboot the computer, you call the administrator, uh, you wait uh, for the work to be done, for the internet to come back. Uh, if it's slow, you have a cup of coffee. You, know, uh, you lose some time, uh, you get a little frustrated, but uh, nobody gets hurt. If OT stops, the physical process will still go on and may do the unexpected. You know, you think of the uh, Fukushima reactor disaster in, in 2011 uh, after a tsunami and, and, uh, and an earthquake. The control room of the reactor lost all power, all the instrumentation, all the data that was coming from the network, uh, it was lost, it was gone, it just there was no electricity. But the physical process in the reactor did do something and unfortunately led to very tragic outcomes. So, so that is the, you know, the, the big difference. One is you call the administrator in the IT world, in the ICS world where the physical process is, you may need to call the fire department and the rescue people. You might have property damage, uh, injured people, or, or, or the environmental is, is damaged. What are the key takeaways of this MLM? Well, it's understanding industrial cybersecurity terminology is a vital step in developing a cybersecurity program for the enterprise. We need to understand what it is we are trying to protect and their particular functions and security requirements before we can develop effective policies to protect them. For further information, there are related MLMs uh, MLM 0114A on IT, OT, and IACS definitions, and other MLMs on the list. There are also some reference materials that you can look at on the websites and continue your learning of this topic.